And, he, and we're going we're gonna to take a minute to pray for, and there's some things that God's laid on my heart specifically that we need to pray for today physically. And if you've got physical needs, you've been calling out things, the Spirit's been identifying things in your, in your heart, in your life, and you've been in agreement with the Holy Spirit. But today, um, the secret, this last session that we're going to have is, is not just about what we are renouncing and what we're saying no to. It's about who we're saying yes to. Because living the life of freedom is more than just saying no, 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 no. It's about saying yes, 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 yes to the Spirit of God and letting the Holy Spirit fill you up. It's not just what we're emptying ourselves of. We've been emptying ourselves of maybe anger today, of shame today, of fear today, of soul ties today. We've been emptying ourselves, but now we want to make sure that we fill ourselves up with the Holy Spirit today. We want to say, come Holy Spirit and do everything that you want to do in our life. Now, if you've been a part of Christ Fellowship in the last couple months, you know that we spent the whole month of August talking about the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, what he wants to do in your life. Remember how he, he'll take the light out and he'll shine the light on the word of God and teach you something while you're in study. He'll take that light out and shine it on places in your heart, that little piece of mold that personally is growing in the closet that he wants to address. He'll guide you. He'll speak to you. It's only by the Holy Spirit that we even can know God. He's the one that, that, that knocks on the door of our heart and says, hey, I'm here for you. He's the one that helps us know how to live life. He's our guide. He's our counselor. He's our comforter. When there's nobody else that understands, he understands. When there's nobody else you can turn to, he's always there. He is your constant companion, your closest friend. He is God. We talked about um, how the Holy Spirit is not an it. It's not a force. It's not the goosebumps. It's not vibes. He is God. Fully God. As much as God Father is God, God Son is God, God Spirit is God. We talked about how in, in Genesis he is the first one of the Trinity that is even mentioned. At the creation of the earth, in Genesis chapter 1, it says the Spirit of God was hovering over the deep. He was right there at, at creation, at the beginning. We talked about how when Mary conceived Jesus... It was by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God overshadows her. You jump to Acts chapter 2, and you, you read about the, the birth of the church, this. It only started because the Holy Spirit showed up. He showed up in power in that upper room. He filled the hearts and the lives of the believers that were there. See, the Spirit of God is all about starting something new. He's all about new things. He's all about creating something new. So if you need him to do something new in your life, you've got to constantly say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, I welcome you in. Holy Spirit, I want you to do what only you can do because I need you to do something new inside of me. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. We read a verse and studied a verse for several weeks. Ephesians 5, 18, that says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. We talked about how Paul took the analogy of someone who is drunk with wine and the, the picture of what that looks like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he said, don't be drunk with wine. That'll ruin you. But the picture's the same. Be drunk with the Holy Spirit. See, for someone to be drunk, they don't just need a sip. For someone to be drunk, they don't just need one little swallow or two or half a glass that's all they want no for someone to be drunk they they are intoxicated they have they are filled with the alcohol and when they're filled with the alcohol it overrides their normal abilities like it changes the way they, they think changes the way they see changes the way they talk the way they walk Every, everything about them is overridden by the fact that they are filled with that alcohol. And so Paul says, don't lose this. And he 
even if you've heard me preach this before, don't, don't miss this. Paul says that's what it looks like when you are filled with the Spirit. It, he will change the way you think. He will change the way you talk to your spouse, to your kids, to your co-workers. He will change the way you walk. He will change the way you live. He will change everything. Now, one little sip won't do that. One little half glass won't do that. But when you are filled and constantly being filled with, woo, like the guy on the screen, woo, you are ready. Man, he changes you. He fills you up. You are living under the influence. You're walking under the influence. Everything about your life changes as you say, fill me, Holy Spirit. Fill me, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill my life. This uh, jar is actually, it looks empty, but it's full. It's full of air. And there's actually no way to get the air out of this jar unless you fill it with something else, right? And not just anything, because I could fill it with rocks, but there'd still be some air in there. But when I fill it with, when I fill it with water, the air has to go. See, in all of us, we, um, we're full of it. And what you're full of sometimes isn't good. We got stuff from our past in there. Some of us got some of that out today, right? But now there's an emptiness and a, and a void. And so we want, to, we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we don't want to just be half filled with the Holy Spirit. No, no, we, we want to be... We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We want every, we, I don't even want to be that, like when I fill up a glass of coffee, a cup of coffee in the morning, I usually leave a little bit of space because I don't want it to, to spill out when I take coffee to Julie or when I'm drinking the coffee, but, but the Holy Spirit doesn't leave, we don't want him to leave any space. Because see, I don't want there to be any bit, that little, can you get the camera on this? I don't want, I don't want there to be, I don't want there to be that much of me in me. I don't want, I don't want there to be anything left of me. But most Christians stop right there. Most of us stop right there. Well, this is pretty good, more than most Christians, right? Just a little bit of selfishness, a little bit of anger, a little bit of resentment, a little bit of lust, a little bit of whatever we leave in there. It's a little bit of us the Spirit's still working on. <laughs> but the more we are filled, more of him, less of us, more of him, less of us, we're filled all the way. There we go. Right there. Up to the ground. But how many of you know life happens? Right? You got to go to work. You got to drive on 95. <laughs> you got to pick up your husband's clothes. And kids are bothering you. I mean, you got all sorts of stuff going on that just kind of causes life happens. And all of a sudden there's a gap again. What do we have to do? We have to, we have to run back and say, Spirit of God, fill me up. This morning before I head out, I want to head out with you. If I hang out in my day with that much of a gap in there, who knows what the enemy's going to try to squeeze in there, right? Who knows what's going to try to get compacted down in there. So, so Spirit of God, I need you. I need you to fill up every little bit of cranny of my heart, of every part of me. We talked about that verse, Ephesians 5.18, where it says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we talked about how the tense of that verse is in the present ongoing. Which means it is present active, ongoing. A better interpretation would be keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not one and done. You don't just go, well, I got the Holy Spirit when I got saved. That's all I need. Oh, no, 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 no. No, if you read your Bible in the book of Acts, they kept going back to be filled. They kept praying, Spirit of God, fill us. 
Spirit of God, fill us. Spirit of God, fill us. We need to be bold. Spirit of God, fill us. We need filled. And the Spirit of God would fill them with power and presence and gifts and wonders and miracles would flow through their lives because they were filled. And our prayer is not that we will just be filled, but we want to be filled so that we are overflowing. We want to be filled so that we are living in a place where the Spirit of God is constantly filling and overflowing your life. It's not just for you anymore because you're full. But it gets on all the people around you. It gets on your children. It gets on your neighbors. It gets on the co-workers. All of them start getting in the splash zone is what I like to say. Because your life is so filled with the Spirit of God. Constantly filling you up. Constantly pouring out His presence and power in your life. Giving you wisdom and discernment that He can't help but splash out on other people around you. Now I don't know what kind of church you grew up in. What I love about Christ Fellowship is we got it all. Right? We got everybody. We got... We got the Presbyterians going, oh, where, where, where are we going? Here? Right? And we got the Holy Roller Pentecostals over here going, Whoa! We got Baptists going, where are they? I'm like, I'm praying. We got Catholics, Fathers of the Holy Spirit. I just thought that was all it was. We got it all! I grew up in a church that didn't talk much about the Holy Spirit uh, because I think they were afraid he would show up. <laughs> so they were a little bit like, I told some of you the story that when I was in third grade, we lived up in Kentucky, and my dad was a football coach at Georgetown College, and on the street that we lived on across from the college campus, at the very end was this big old abandoned house, three stories, old Kentucky house, big house, big gate, big yard, and I had to walk by that house because I would, when I was on my way to school or on to the store or something, I would walk that way with my friends. We'd walk. But every time we walked that way, we would always cross over to the other side of the street because it was scary. The windows were bashed out. Some of them were boarded up. There was a big sign on the front door saying, keep out. We heard stories about, and we told stories about how it was haunted. You know, we saw lights in there. One night I saw light upstairs in the attic. Right? So many stories about that house, but we were scared to death about that house. And I realized that some of us, we can treat the Holy Spirit like that. We've heard something, seemed spooky, seemed weird. We saw something, I don't understand why they were doing that. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, what do we do? We, we cross over to the other side of the street. We're like, keep him at a distance. But I can tell you, he is, he is not someone you want to keep at a distance. He is not someone that you need to avoid because of something you heard or something somebody said or somebody did that was weird. He's not weird. He's not spooky. People are weird. People are spooky. But he is God. He is your comfort. He is your guide. He is your healer. He is your sustainer. He is your strength. He is your power. He, want, he is the only way that you're going to take everything that we've walked through today, that you're going to be able to carry it out of here today. It's going to be through the person and the presence and the ongoing filling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Like, like every day, the most simple prayer and most powerful prayer you can pray is come Holy Spirit. Three words. Come Holy Spirit. I can't tell you how many times a day I pray that prayer. Come Holy Spirit. I prayed it as I was driving in again today because I, I knew what God wanted to do in this place. I knew what the Spirit of God wanted to do in your life. Spirit of God, we need you. You need the Spirit of God. He wants to work in you like, like you've never known before. He wants to give you visions. He wants to speak to you. He wants to guide your life. He wants to fill you with gifts. You know, there are gifts of the Spirit of God that He wants to deposit inside of you that will help you live the life that you're called to live. See, a lot of times people show up at Christ Fellowship and they're like, well, what kind of church are you? Because it says Christ Fellowship. We don't know what that means. Are you a, a Spirit-filled church? We better be. Right? Are you Spirit-empowered? Yeah. We're not doing this in our own power. So you're full gospel. But we ain't half gospel. Right? You believe in all the gifts of the Spirit? Yes, we do. 
And they are in operation in our church and they are desperately needed for us to be the people of God we are called to be. We are unashamedly a spirit-filled church. We are unashamedly dependent on the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. And you need him. I need him. Without him, we are on our own and you will never be able to make it on your own. And I needed someone to help me understand who he was. How old was I, Julie? 22? About. And someone who knew more about him helped me know him. They helped me understand who he was and who he wanted to be in my life. And I want to be that person for you today. I want to help you understand who he is and what he wants to do in your life. And I wanna guide you into a personal relationship with him if you don't have it. And I wanna guide you into open up your life because you have to open up your life to him. Like I had to when I was 23 years old, I had to say, Holy Spirit, I don't wanna avoid you anymore. I, I don't want to, uh, I don't wanna ignore you anymore. I don't wanna cross the street anymore and keep you at a distance. I want to invite you to fill me. I want to invite you to do what you want to do in my life. And you know, the first prayer I had to pray was I had to, I had to pray a prayer of forgiveness. I had to ask the Holy Spirit to forgive me because I had grieved him. I had been ignoring him. I had been stiff arming him. And for some of you, that's the first prayer you need to pray today. It's just a prayer of Holy Spirit, forgive me. I didn't know. I didn't know everything you wanted to do in my life. I wasn't aware of everything you wanted to be in my life. Forgive me. And then the second prayer is just simply, I, I invite you in. Take up residency. You can have your way. Anything and everything. It is yours. Fill me with your presence and your power. Help me to hear your voice. Speak to me. If there's things in my life, because there probably are some things in my life that you want to point out that are not like you, I want you to do that. I don't want that in my heart. I don't want that in my life. I need you to show me, turn the spotlight on. And then give me the gifts that you need, that I need to have, that you want to give me the supernatural spirit gifts that I'm to have as a follower of you so that I can live in victory and in power and in strength.